Well, hi, I'm Ricky, and this is Noise Bridge, a hacker space in the Mission District in San Francisco. We are part of the Great Global Hacker Space Challenge, and for this challenge, we built a really awesome device called the BioBoard. So, the idea for the BioBoard project came from another Noise Bridge activity that we are very fond of in these parts, namely kombucha production. Kombucha is a fermentation process, which means that you've got a bunch of microorganisms in this fluid basically turning uh, sugar tea into yummy yummy kombucha. And in order to make good kombucha every time, we'd like to be able to monitor this process. We'd like to be able to monitor the temperature of fluctuations, we'd like to be able to monitor the acidity, we'd like to be able to monitor oxygen levels and biomass. Hi, I'm Charlie, and I'm involved with some of the temperature measurements for the bio. Specifically, here's a thermistor, a very inexpensive, probably on the order of 25 cents, temperature measurement device that comes in a wide variety of shapes and sizes, all the way down to the size of a grain of sand. And it's just a resistor which has a very, very dependable dependence of the resistance on the temperature. So we can monitor the resistance, determine the temperature of our biological systems. Here's what it looks like once we've mounted it in a waterproof probe. So we've attached our wires to it, we've used a piece of acrylic tubing, and we've filled the space in between with silicone aquarium cement. And we've got our thermistor poking out just a little bit here for a rapid thermal response time. This is a digital temperature sensor and it's based on an integrated circuit technology and one of the advantages of it is that it sends the information directly as a dig digital signal to the Arduino. It costs a little bit more, about four dollars, but it has its advantages. Hi, I'm Rolf and I'm working on the Arduino part of the BioBoard project and uh, right here we have an infrared absorption probe and uh, as Ricky mentioned earlier, infrared absorption uh, is an interesting thing to measure uh, for measuring biomass uh, such as the yeast inside this kombucha. So for example, let me show you the probe. There's basically an infrared LED that is facing an infrared phototransistor. And based on how much of the light makes it to the other side, with kombucha or whatever liquid flowing through there, we can basically determine how much of the light is absorbed. That signal goes through these wires and is an analog signal that goes to one of the inputs on the Arduino, in this case a Borduino, made by Adafruit. I'm Otute and I'm looking uh, at the pH probes uh, for, this, for this system. Um, the reason you'd be interested in pH is because you might be interested in the acidity of the medium you're looking at, and that's what the pH probe is for. It measures the hydrogen ion concentration in your solution, which basically translates into a pH uh, reading. Now, you could obtain a pH probe commercially, such as this one here, about $30. Um, but what we're interested in is how you can make one on your own, just from readily available household materials. Starting with this Christmas ornament here, which after treating, boiling it in bleach for a while, you can remove all the coating and paint and get this uh, really clear glass bowl. Um, on here is glued this piece of plastic tubing. Inside is filled with potassium chloride solution and a silver wire. Um, basically silver chloride wire, which you can make yourself very easily at home. Um, the other half of the pH probe is what's called the reference cell, which is basically very similar to the pH probe except it provides a, a stable reference voltage for your pro probe to operate. This particular one is filled with agar jelly um, soaked in potassium chloride solution with a silver wire. Then all you need to do is connect this, these ends to your pH meter to get your pH reading. Hi, my name is Sean and I've been working on the dissolved oxygen implementation for this project. So, you might not care about dissolved oxygen now, but it's a very important parameter for fermentation. It'll let you know if you're going to get ethanol or carbon dioxide, or it's going to let you know if you're going to get algae in your lake or fish in your lake. Um, historically, this is a very difficult parameter to measure, mostly because commercial dissolved oxygen probes run in the four dollars to $500 range. So we really wanted to cut that down using a simple set of plumbing fittings, and instead of making a traditional sensor, we made an octo. Uh, an octo works by shining a blue LED onto a fluorescent film. Uh, the intensity of the flore fluorescence off that film is directly related to the amount of oxygen in contact with the film. 
Uh, the brightness of that film is read using a simple photo transistor, so the electronics, the circuits are all very simple, all the components are very cheap, and you have a solved oxygen print. Hi, my name is Joel, and uh, I did the PC software for the BioPort project. Uh, we wanted to be able to log all the data coming from these probes and also put it online for everyone to see. So we did a two part piece of software, a like, logging daemon that takes in all the data, puts it in a database, and a uh, second piece of software that is actually a web server that shows all the data in an online graph. So here we have the BioPort plugged in to our probes, and uh, you can see us measuring some kombucha here. We have temperature and uh, near infrared probe measuring kombucha. And then uh, in order to log this and show it in graphs, we have a USB cable here. You just plug it into your computer. Also, there's an option to use an ether shield if you want to do it over the internet. And then uh, you go to the server, the, the web server software here, uh, and you just click on the project. It will show the graphs for the data. We have temperature and near infrared, and uh, you can see what's happening in your group. So, at this stage, we have just over 24 hours left of the challenge, and we have so far succeeded in building two different temperature sensors a near infrared sensor, a almost fully functional pH meter, including amplifier circuit, and a almost fully functional dissolved oxygen sensor. So all in all, we're pretty happy with ourselves and ready to start testing these babies. Should you want to either read more about the project in general or try to build any of this at home, you can read our blog posts on the Element 14 community blog or you can refer to the BioBoard wiki. Enjoy!